guys. Hey, happy Friday. So today we have a very exciting project. We are going to make our boring Formica countertops look like... Why do I always forget this? What is it? It's, it's the wood. Butcher block. Butcher block wood. So we're not sure actually if we're going to do butcher block or kind of like a barnyard plank. Mm -hmm. um, but either way, we have all the materials that we need and we're super excited to get rid of these boring Formica countertops. We've been going back and forth about what to do. We've, we've lived here for a while and we were going to go with um, I think granite. granite at first and then mm -hmm. we were just going to paint them and we then were gonna we were going to do... Oh yeah, cement was time. another thing, which still sounds like a good idea, but we're going to go with the butcher block, but we're going to create it ourselves to save right. money. We are on a budget, yeah. like most Americans, especially during these times. Um, we live in a 105 year old home. It's absolutely gorgeous and we love it, but we also like saving money and creating beautiful... Make it, make it our own. Exactly. So. so, we're gonna get started with the rundown of materials that we chose for this project. Um, most of them are the basic materials that you will need. Some of them are custom to our liking. So first, we're going to cut the crud with crud cutter. <laughs> crud cutter. Uh, I use this on all of my projects, even on my furniture pieces that I buy. I buy a lot of antiques and a lot of times um, they're old and dirty and you just, it's a great product. Sandpaper. Mm -hmm. This is 120. Typically, I think you probably use 220, but we're just not going to sand the crap out of it. We're just going to use this, kind of lightly go over it. That's what and we then, had on um, hand. After that, we'll clean it all up and start going at it. So we have our little uh, six pack of rollers and our handle. Uh, these ones are kind of the more expensive ones. These are the smooth quarter inch nap. I typically wouldn't have gotten these ones, but we had them on hand. Um, you, you don't want a very smooth surface for this project. So this will be fine for the base coat, but again, you could buy something cheaper. The tray. Very important to have a tray to <laughs> yeah, store the paint in the tray. Blue tape. We're going to tape off our countertop into what? I think we decided on eight inch planks. Eight inch planks. Planks. Uh, stir sticks, paint key. And then. We want to talk about. Oh, yeah. We got cheap brushes because we want to go for that grainy look on the, uh, on the countertops. Yes. We're just going to use these ones, throw them away. I think they're like a buck forty-seven each. And so, uh, like Bill said, the the chip brush it's very very important. 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 And very. In, and important. They are both those things. Um, in order to achieve that grain look, and um, these bristles, I'm sure everybody has used a chip brush before, but they are not the best quality, and they're not for creating super smooth texture. So this will allow us to get that grain wood look that we're really going for. So I just found out what a chip brush was tonight. Okay, so, so I'm wrong. for you people that don't know what a chip brush is, it's just a cheap brush. <laughs> maybe she has a speech impediment and it's really a cheap brush. Maybe, who knows? But it's maybe a chip brush. <laughs> so, and it oh, maybe may it's important. Yeah, all those things, important. Yeah, you look really pretty tonight, too. Thank you. Uh, tape measure. We had two. She lost both of them. So we got another one, a gray one, 25 foot, so we can measure off all our measurements that we need. So, and, then, and then our three paints. Yeah. Um, so we're going with our base color. is going to be Mesa Taupe. I don't know how well the camera will pick this color up. It's like an almond. It's Yes, that's a great uh, it? description. It is very mm -hmm. just almond. <laughs> and we wanted that to be our base, but you're not really going to see a lot of that. So um, Because, why? Because we're going to cover it with... We are going to create some browns. green with two similar browns, but... I think it's going to look good. A berry brown, which it is almost gray, a black but it's not. Brown. But it's not. It's, it's brown. And a Havana coffee. Mm -hmm. So... Ex instead of trying to explain to you what we're going to do with these, we're going to get this prepped and jump in. Uh, but before that, oh, yeah. once all the paint is on there and everything is dry, we are going to seal it with a water-based polyurethane. And how many coats do I have to put on this? I think we're going to do four. We want these countertops to last. and Because it's our forever home. It's our forever home. And 
worst case, if it does not turn out, maybe in a year we will replace these countertops. But for we, now, we probably will because we do lots of projects and nothing is ever good enough. That's not true. But <laughs> we, we are excited to start this. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm actually going to jump behind the camera and Bill is going to show you how easy it is to uh, put the first coat down. But first, we're going to get this prepped and ready to go. So if anyone can do it, if I can do it, anyone can anyone do it. Anyone can do it. So just keep that in mind. So we will be back with you guys shortly. Okay, so right now Bill is prepping the countertop. Uh, just kind of taping off the stove. We're going to tape off any areas. Obviously, we don't want to have any paint. Um, but while he's doing that, I'm just going to run through some of the stuff that we did to prep the countertop. So we did use the 120 sandpaper and we sanded the countertops, but we sanded them all in the direction that we want the grain to go. Um, just in case, you know, any of those scuff marks show up we want them to help with the appearance of the grain. And another thing you're gonna to wanna to do is if you have any damage to your countertops, you're gonna to wanna to repair that before applying any of the paint. So if you have any loose formica um, that may be coming up on the ends, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that that's glued down. If you have any divots or chips missing, you're gonna to wanna to get a wood filler and fill that in. Um, you want a nice clean surface in order to have the paint adhere properly and for everything to look smooth and really nice. So Bill is going to continue prepping the counter space and we will be back shortly to begin painting. Thanks. All right, so we have our base coat ready to go. Bill is going to start applying that to the countertop and it's funny because it's almost the same exact color that the countertop currently is. So yeah, that looks really nice. Ooh, I like this. And I don't know if I've mentioned this, but we are using bare chalk paint. Um, I use chalk paint on all my products and all of my furniture pieces. Um, it's gonna look good. Yeah, I'm really excited. So we're gonna do two coats of this base. That's going on really nice. So I'm going to actually help get this going. No, I don't want to help. And then it's all mine. And then we'll be right back. Okay, so we're just finishing up this countertop. We're still on our first coat of the base color. Uh, one thing to know with the chalk paint, you don't wanna overwork it. You want to get your first coat laid down. Um, do not worry about making that first coat opaque because we are going to go back over with a second coat. Um, you don't wanna overwork it because it starts getting thick. You start pulling it up with the roller. Um, and it just, it's better to just let it dry and we'll hit that spot that you might have missed on your second go around. So again, we are going to get this finished up and we'll get back with our second coat. Okay, so we have this whole first coat on and as you can see, it's not, it's not too bad, but it's not very opaque, which is fine. Um, but you can see we did not overwork it. There are lines going, which is actually going to help to create that texture that we're looking for. Um, it's kind of hard to see in the lighting here, but it got a little smooth over here. No big deal because the second coat we are actually not going to roll on. We are going to apply with the chip brush uh, to help start building that grain. So we're gonna let this dry and we'll pop back in in a few hours and get that second coat applied. All right, bye. Okay, so we're back to put on the second coat and we've had a little change of plans. 
Um, originally we were going to apply the second coat with the chip brush, um, but we started to test it just to see what kind of grain we could get with it. And because the chip brush is so inexpensive, they shed a lot and we decided to roll the second coat on and then just use the chip brush when applying the darker browns to create the stain. Um, I apologize, you can hear my dogs barking outside. They must see a squirrel. But, um, so yes, we are going to get this second coat applied and then once that dries, we will start taping off our eight inch planks and then get back to you and show you how we will go about creating that um, faux grain with those two contrasting browns. Hey guys, so we're back. It's the next day and the countertop is completely dry. And now we are beginning to prep it for the next step. So what we've done is, it's extremely easier if you have a yardstick um, you can use a tape measure to mark off how wide you want your boards, um, but you do want something with a straight edge to make your lines, uh, to make sure that they continue straight the entire length of your countertop. So what we did is we marked off eight inches from the edge and made these lines going all the way up. On this side here, we actually laid the tape for the first set of boards. Um, so we want to stagger our boards. This will be our first uh, board is eight inches wide and then the length is going to vary along the countertop to give it a more staggered effect. So for this one here, we have eight inches wide and I think we went with 29 inches long. So the reason why we did not tape all of the lines and it'll make more sense once we start painting and you see what we're doing um, but if we were to paint this board and then this was taped when we remove this tape there would be a line an empty line here so what we're going to actually do is paint this board first um, and then keep moving down painting our boards and then once this whole section here is done we will remove this tape and actually put it behind our next set of lines so that way our boards meet when we start painting them and it might sound confusing now but it will actually make a lot more sense once we get started so we are going to dive in we're gonna get our paints ready and we'll be right back with you guys okay so we're back we've gotten our first board done uh, this is what it looks like here and now Bill is going to show you before we start the next board you're going to remove the dividing tape like he's doing here. If you have a little bleed through, it is not the end of the world because you will see that the next board is going to start immediately against this one um, and the colors will kind of blend, but we don't totally want them to blend um, 100% because we outlined this particular board in a darker brown to kind of break up the contrast of the next board. So. What Bill is going to do for the next board is he's going to hold the brush sideways in the lighter of the two browns and paint sideways with making less opaque strokes. So you want to see some of this base color coming through the paint. And uh, for the paint or the two browns that we're using, we actually did a half water, half paint mixture. And again, we are using chalk paint. Um, so for the, for the browns that we're doing, you want that paint watered down so it does not go on very opaque. The ideal here is to have a very streaky wood-like effect. Am I doing good? You're doing very well. So now you can tell he probably needs to get his brush wet. Just dip it very lightly in the lighter of the two browns and do longer kind of streakier brush strokes. And this is exactly why I said to do this project and to do it well. It's a project where you do not have to be perfect. Uh, you, don't, you do not want to be perfect. You want 
this to look like wood. Um, don't worry about, if your brush is shedding, don't worry about it. It will be able, you'll be able to pull it right out as soon as the paint dries. Um, if you try to pull it out while it's wet, you're just going to mess up your beautiful work. So as you start coming closer to the connecting board, you do want to be careful not to overlap into that board because that you want to keep that line of separation. So Bill is doing a wonderful job uh -huh. of getting that lighter brown on there. So you do want to kind of start sweeping straight um, brush strokes. You want the wood to look like you have long lines of grain. And if you find that at times you have to turn your brush a little bit to kind of vary the brush strokes, you can do that too. So when I get to the end here, I'm gonna have to turn my brush. You wanna like turn your brush to meet up with that next board okay. and put the paint on your brush, start at the line and pull away from it. Ooh, good. So you'll wanna turn your brush the other way oh, yeah. and pull. There you go. You're so smart. <laughs> And then once you work the product down away from the line, you can start turning your brush the opposite direction and pulling that. And if you overlap a little, do not stress out about anything on this project because you oh, can always go, go back. Like that? Yep. That okay? Yes, that is perfect. So now that you have that on there, you'll want to turn it the other way and start pulling that product down and away, making those lines. There you go. And you're starting to achieve that wood-like effect okay and then now that you have your base color on let's show them how to go through with the darker of the two browns so for this one we're using our smaller brush we're just lightly dipping it into the darker of the two browns and you'll want to go around the edge of the tape and this is where you're creating the definition of this board. So it doesn't just blend into its connecting board. Um, we're trying to achieve the look of reclaimed barn wood. So when you do have that for a project, none of the pieces typically match. And that is the look that we are going for. Now, we do have this one darker on this side. So on this one, we probably will not outline it dark here because we want the contrast between those two boards. So Bill has gone ahead and started with the dark contrast on the outside here. Um, and then he can do that along the bottom, along the tape as well. Right over here? Yep. And then just put pull that down. product on. Nope, you're gonna put the product on and pull away. So you want all of your grain lines okay. going the same direction. And then you wanna to try to swipe it through with dark or with long strokes. So longer swiping strokes. There you go. You really wanna blend it into the other color that you're using. Get a little bit more paint on there. That's starting to look really good. So now we can actually go through and show a knot. How, <laughs> how we're going to do a knot. Bill's been nervous about <laughs> doing this one on camera. We had to practice on the first board and he did really, really well. So I'm um, just really wanting to show you guys how simple this is for anybody. Do you want me to go anybody. all the way through with the black? Just, you can do a small knot. Let's just show how simple it is. Okay. So maybe start down here where this base is dry because it was it, it's better on. So you're just going to do a twist and a pull. And now, okay, so now let's go back through and show them how to complete the knot. You're going to go slowly. There you go. Don't try to just sweep it. Just go nice and slow and outline the knot. Don't sweep it, just do continuous movement. Very nice. And again, 
nothing in nature is perfect. You want this to look very, and then he's just kind of doing some highlights with the dark. You don't really want to go through the light too much on this one with the dark because you want this to be a contrasting board. So then here you can see on the side, on this one, we outlined this in the dark, so we brought it down on the edge into the dark. On this one here, we will bring the sides down with the light. Now, this part you wouldn't think is too important, but for me personally, I kind of pay attention to detail. So when your boards are going this way, you want your lines on the side to match the board. So you're gonna sweep it horizontally. I'll show you what you would do on this side. If the board was cut, your lines would go vertically, which is what we did here. So vertically this way, and then horizontally along the face of the island. All right, so we are going to finish up this board with some light sweeping with a dry brush. And this is just to break up any, it has a little bit of paint on it, but that's just from dry brushing the first board. So you're not gonna put any paint on this brush. You are just going to, with long light sweeping strokes, just break up any opaqueness that you might have created or any short brush strokes and really just create more texture and lines. If you've done any knots, you wanna lightly sweep around them. You don't really wanna break up too much of the detail. And this will help create a very real board-like effect. Good. That looks amazing. Right now, it's still wet in areas, so it looks a little blotchy on film, but once it is dry, we will come back and let you see the two boards next to each other completely dry. And then we will start that third one down on the end. Okay, so we're back. We have our first row of boards completed. And they're still just a little wet, but you can see how with the contrast, it looks like three different boards. And now that this one's almost completely dry, you can see the detail of the knots and some of the dark. Show them the other two board knots. Those are the best ones. So, so the one down here on the end is the one that Bill did and it actually turned out perfect. It looks amazing. It's mm -hmm. still a little wet, so we'll, sh we'll come back to it once it's dry and it'll look a lot more realistic at that point. But even looking down from here, you can see how it, with the different, the two different browns and mixing them, it looks like three different boards. So what we wanna show you now is how to connect this row of boards with the next row. And you can see here, we have our little lines that go all the way down and it will be eight inches from this board. Not eight inches from our tape, but eight inches from the line that the tape created. So what we are going to do, and you will probably if you're working alone, you can achieve this, but you probably cannot use the same piece, but we're just gonna, we're gonna use the same piece of tape and we're going to place it behind our lines. So you wanna get this behind your line and you want to make sure you roll it down um, on the edge here. So that way you have separation here as well. And then just make sure that your tape runs along your line the entire way down. You do not want to put it in front of your line because then that will not be a true eight inches from your last board. And again, you can see we have some bleed through, but it's not going to matter because we are going to come right up to this board with our contrasting color. So this board will have a light base this one will also have a light base, but will have a darker outline. Um, and then for the line going across, we will not do that here. What we will do is probably move it up here to create that staggered effect. Um, to give you kind of 
an idea of what we're going for. This is actually the face of our island, which we did in floor planks, um, but we just glued them to the face of our island because it's a very cheap island. It's custom made, but I think it came with the house when the addition was done 30 years ago and it was just a very thin wood and I wanted to beef it up um, so when the bar stools are there, you know, it can survive kicks and whatnot. But there, you can see it has that staggered effect. And uh, I think this is just a vinyl flooring. But it is actually, and you can't really see in this lighting, but it's actually really starting to blend right into the colors that we're using for the countertop here. The lighting is a little bit better. And you can see it's almost a perfect match. And I think it's going to look really nice once it's dry. And once we show our final reveal, we'll have better lighting uh, hooked up. But we are going to get started on our next row. So before we start, I'm going to show you how we're gonna place our next piece of tape. So, here you can see our line to separate these two boards is here. So this is very random. It doesn't have to be thought out. You just don't want it in the same spot or, or anywhere pretty close to it. You want it to have a staggered effect. So maybe Bill's gonna choose to right put there. it there. That looks perfect. You just want to make sure it's straight. <laughs> this is the hardest part of the job. All right, so that looks great. That's going to give us a nice, if you come into this angle here, it's going to give us a nice staggered look. And so this board, we started off with a darker contrast. So this one will not have a dark contrast along its edge because we want to see that separation. Um, I think that's the biggest part of this project. Now, if you want to do a continuous faux wood countertop, that is completely up to you and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, they make, you know, wood large enough to make it appear as though it was just a, a wooden countertop. But we, like I said, are going for that barnyard kind of reclaimed uh, planks and that is the look we chose. So that is why we are doing the contrasting separation. So we are going to actually get this board painted and we'll be back to show you the next step. Okay, so we actually decided to film this next one because this one I feel like might be a little tricky. Um, so if we take a look at the countertop, we have a lighter board here and we have a darker board here. But our next board goes into both of those. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do is have this entire board have a light base. So I'm gonna start with that. I'm gonna use my larger brush with my lighter base color. And I'm just gonna start getting that on there, making long continuous strokes, getting that grain effect. And really like, with this countertop being so large and whatnot, find whatever working position feels comfortable for you. There's no right or wrong way to get this paint on there. Just as long as you're able to make decent swiping strokes. So where'd you get this idea? Um, I actually have been, like we talked about earlier, been watching butcher block countertops for a while and I've been watching videos on creating faux anything. I am not a fan of marble, but there were a lot of videos on doing marble countertops. And so then I started thinking, well, if there's marble faux countertops, there has to be faux butcher block. And lo and behold, I <laughs> found some and I thought, well, that looks simple enough. And the weird thing is, is that I do faux wood um, on my furniture. And why I never thought to try it on a countertop is odd, but here we are. 
trying it. And it's actually, to my surprise, turning out nicely. Mm -hmm. And it is, it's, it's fairly simple. I mean, Bill, you're not much of a hand painter. What? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you paint more with the spray gun, but doing it this way, would you say not being, I'm not saying you're an inexperienced painter, but not being very accustomed to hand painting? It's, I like it. I don't have to uh, think about it. I kind of just throw the paint on there and make so simple brush strokes and kind of just does its thing. And you made that knot. Now that looks like it's a detailed, like you have to be some kind of an artist, but you literally did that in one brush stroke. <laughs> And yeah. you, neither of us had ever done faux knots before. So this is something that I am actually going to, this is a skill that I'm going to start applying to uh, my furniture when I'm doing dressers and desks with faux wood tops. Cause a lot of the furniture that I've been working with, some have Formica tops and you can't really sand down too much without damaging them. Um, but you still like to have that natural effect. So. This is a great way to achieve that. Yeah, so you can now, totally tell the difference yeah. between the... And this is nice because this is mainly a darker one. This is mainly the lighter one with some dark contrast. Now this is completely a board on its own with all light. And so it almost looks like we have three different colors going on when in actuality we have, we are working with two. So there are a variety of combinations you can get with these colors. And this here, just working the lighter base in, having some of that uh, first color that we use kind of popping through. And so I'm really happy with the way this looks, but I do wanna add just a little bit of detail and you can even try doing a knot with the same color that you're using. It doesn't necessarily have to be your contrasting color. So I'm gonna give it a try. So we just do a swipe, keep going. And now you're just gonna go back, outline that, continuous strokes. Boom. Get that detail in there. Now I might go through with a little bit of the dark and kind of give that a little more contrast. And it doesn't have to be the entire part. I might just start here, kind of give it just a little swipe. So do you like making knots or not? <laughs> You're hilarious. <laughs> huh, that's funny. So yeah, I like that a lot. Um, I might just add a little bit more contrast here. And now this looks kind of thick to me. So I'm going to take our dry brush and kind of just swipe that, really break it up. Get that blended in. And these chip brushes shed like crazy, but please believe me when I tell you that if you allow the paint to dry, um, you can just roll the hair or the fiber right off. She's not lying, because I tried to take it off when it was wet and she got mad and then <laughs> So here's one here. Yeah, that's mine. And since our, our paint is watered down, it's not gonna matter. So you literally can just, now it's gonna make a liar. <laughs> here's one. You can literally just roll it right off and it doesn't leave a mark. This guy here is a little bit more stuck. He might just live here. <laughs> so I don't wanna damage the paint, but here, he's starting to roll away. So there he goes. And he did leave a little mark in the paint which technically it does look like a piece of uh, 
I don't know, just a little bit of the imperfection in the wood, I don't think it's gonna bother me. But let's come look at uh, Bill's knot now that it's yeah. completely dried. I mean, that looks amazing. Dang. It looks like <laughs> an actual piece of wood. Um, and that's what I'm saying. This job, you do not need to be perfect. Um, and you can go over and over and over <laughs> until you get it the way you want it. If you feel like it's too thick or too dark, you know, take your dry brush and fan over it. Get it. That's looking good. Get it just how you want it. I still think it needs just a touch more of the dark just here. Kind of break it up. Drag it down. <coughs> so the most important thing here is you don't want it to be uniform. That is the exact opposite of what you're going for. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep going with our boards. We'll um, come back and show you what we, how far we've gotten. We might film just doing the last board just to give you an idea of what you have. Some ideas on how to create each board, how to make them different from the last and how to divide and, and outline and shadow them so you can see the contrast. All right guys, we're finally done and this is how it turned out and we seriously could not be happier. Um, it took us about two hours to complete this entire island. Uh, this spot here is still a little wet and we have not applied the top coat yet which we will do in about two hours after it has thoroughly dried. And we'll probably do about four coats of a polyurethane. Um, but yeah, this looks really good. We're super happy with it. And there might be a couple spots that I might touch up before putting the top coat on. But as of right now, we really like the look and we even add it some knots and um, just random lines that even went down onto the side just for extra, um, know, just to make it look a lot more real and believable. But yeah, we're really happy with it. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us during this project. We really appreciate it. And if you'd like to see more of these projects, don't forget to hit that red subscribe button down below. And turn on your notifications so you know the next time we upload a video. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.